Hey guys, in this video I wanted to show you how to sketch a trailer track in a matter of minutes just using one shots. Uh, now this is what I do often, especially with sound design cues, I want to sketch out the track so that I can, I've got the, the bulk of the track done before I then start thinking about all the creative elements which can tend to take a lot of time. Uh, like for instance finding a signature sound or you know finding the right pad whatever it is so I tend to do this as a way to sketch a track quickly and easily and alleviate a lot of the structural pressures that can come from writing a trailer cue so I have loaded up an, an empty thing just for the sake of it oh let's get rid of that goodbye hybrid trailer percussion 10 audio channels come just using one shots at this stage uh, and I'm going to consider this track to be about two minutes, two minutes, twen let's say two minutes, 20. So that's going to go up to bar 97. Now, the idea here is that I sketch out act one, two, three, and four, you know, that final sort of bosh, bosh, bosh on the route. Nice and quickly. I'm going to use my collection of free samples that you can download uh, on my website at richardprin.com forward slash toolkit and maybe some other freebies as well. Uh, but the purpose here is that we have a, co a collection of tools that you can use to sketch out a track real quick. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import some sounds. Uh, I'm gonna start from act one and work that way, act one, two, three, and four. And what I want to start with is a low sub boom. Now this is, oh, this is, the idea is that I think about my track in terms of growth, even in this stage. So I start with less information. So in this instance, we start with a nice sub boom to kick us off. And then as we progress, I'm going to add more and more. So just as a mere matter of marking the track, we want to go, let's say, a about 30 seconds, we're going to drop another boom there. I can, the thing is, I can move all of this later on, and I'm going to put a boom right at the end. Because I don't want any of these sub heavy booms to be throughout the rest of the track, because the bigger hits I'm going to use are going to have all of that information anyway. Boom. <laughs> done. Okay, track is essentially sketched, done. No, joking. Uh, now I need to import some other stuff. Oh, blimey. Where was I? Desktop. Richest Trailer Music Toolkit in the sample pack. I've got a boom. Now I want to start thinking about other hits. Now this is all, there we go. Huge trailer hit, slam of the undead, swish hit, trailer hit and downer. I'm going to use the, get the trailer hit and downer. Here. There we go. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Of course I did. Trail hitting down now. Now this one's a bit of a beast. Uh, this is in uh, another one of my trailer music toolkits. This one is part of a collection of 60 trailer hits, uh, which will be available on my shop. I guess you call it shop. My store, my products, products.rogerprin.com uh, to buy. So I'm going to use this as my marker for between Act 2 and Act 3 uh, because it's a nice big hit and, you know, that's kind of where we want the downer to be. Uh, and I'm going to check it in here. Spew! Job done. Hit and downer. Okay, next one. Let's keep on importing. I'm going to grab this swish hit. This was one of my own creations. Uh, I'm going to bring this in for my Act 2. It's quite a, a drum-heavy one. It's not like a huge hybrid hit at all, which, you know, you don't necessarily need those big hybrid hits all the time. But this, because this is quite a percussive-sounding one, i.e. it sounds like a load of drums rather than like an explosion in your ears, I'm going to be using this regularly. So every, say... Four, four bars. Every eight bars. Let's go every eight bars. I'm not. I'm not concerning myself too much about how this track is going to be developing. 
because the idea being that I just sketch it nice and quickly. And okay, so is that too long? Have I gone too long? Four, eight, four, ah, there we go. Ta da! And these ones, ta da! There we go. And then this is going to be, just for the sake of it, this is going to be act four, boom, boom, boom. And then one final sub boom. So you can kind of get the feel for what I'm doing now. And if you if you can't visualize what I'm doing f from what I'm doing, uh, I'm just going to draw in some regions. I I know I know I could use markers, guys, um, but I'm still such a fan of regions. Just love a region. Okay, so this is essentially my act one. I mean, we could say it like this: this is act one, and then we've got act two. Hello. Hmm. Act two, and then we've got act three up here. This is kind of what I'm thinking. Now, you see, I'm going to have to do a bit of moving around just to make sure everything kind of matches up a bit more. There we go. So that's act one. This is act two. And then we've got the drop down to act three. Then we've got act three coming in about here. And then we've got act four coming in here, which will be marked with. Ah. Oh, yeah, I've taken off the marquee tool. There we go. Now that's kind of the shape of my of my track. Act one, act two, act three, and then we've got this final act four. And I'm just bringing this together with hits and stuff so far. Let's keep on going. I want to see if I can get a bigger hit going on. What's this huge trailer hit? Nice. That's kind of more like the trailer hits when we're used to. Um, I might use that a bit more often, actually. Drop that one down a bit. Cool. That sounds like a nice marriage, actually. Every two, and then here it's going to be one, and then we're going to repeat it. I might EQ these a little bit, but at this stage, I don't really care. I just want to get this sketched out. Because the thing is, at this stage, we're not... This is like sketching with a pencil. It's nothing... Uh, we're not trying to get all the details in here. We're kind of getting all the gestures. And then we'll just call that huge hit, which I believe, again, is part of the... It you you can get this one for free in the free toolkit. It's all part of the bigger kit as well for sixty hits. Uh, and slam of the undead. I think this is. <laughs> I like that one. It might be the wrong type of sound. Uh, this is kind of for more. Ooh, look at that! What a beast! I think I designed this myself. This was me and my daughter going around the house with a Zoom H5 recording sounds for one of my sound design courses. See, I like that for the atmosphere it creates, so I might just keep that one for an atmospheric element. Maybe I'll check that at the end. There we go. Uh, slam undead. There we go. So we're starting to kind of get the shape of things. Now let's bring in some other elements. Now, we've got the kind of gist of it here. We've got this growth through hits, which is great. Now let's think of some transitions. So reverses and things like that. Working from a dream like that. Okay, so this is going to come in. I think this should go transition into act two. I might take it to the... Let's take that last bit off. Rev effects, that's what I'm going to be calling it. Technically a transition, but you know. Like that, sounds cool. I'm going to put it there as well. I'm also going to put it at the end here. I'm just, what I'm trying to do here, guys, is I'm bringing in this transition at the start of an act, start of an act, and the ending. 
Okay, I could bring it in earlier, and I could put it in more places, but at this age, like I said, it's it's sketching. Return from the undead. Okay, that's that hit. Oh, I like this one. Let's use that. That's awesome. That definitely sounds like something I should be using. Uh, oh, okay. So we want to bring this in. I think I might use this solely in Act 3. Let's see. And again, chop this off at the end. Cool. So we've got two elements here. We've got this this element which I'm using here, and also we've got this element between the acts two and three. And I might actually just move a lot of this. One more bar just to give it that much more room to breathe. So this is another trick I often do. So you've got, you see me, I've cut this transition in half. Uh, and we have this leftover little chappy over here. With the kind of gentler aspect of the transition, I often use that for the end of Act 1. Just giving it a little fade out. Okay, and then assist, listen to this. <laughs> That's brutal and cool. I like that a lot. I'm going to put that there at the end of Act 4. The slam of the undead, it's a bit wonky. I might not use that one. Um, that's sort of good organic sound design stuff. I might put that there, put these chappies here. I'm tempted to do something like this with these guys. Uh, chop them and repeat them at the beginning, at the B, at the end of each sort of two bar. It's that type of thing. That's where I'm going anyway. Uh, let's just move these guys a little bit. It might be a bit too much because it's quite an intense sound, but that's kind of what you want at the end of Act 4, you know, or the finale for Act 3, whatever you want to call it. So it's starting to shape up. I'm starting to get... Uh, I'm starting to get some sounds coming in that are giving it more atmosphere, giving it more intention. So we've got these transitions, uh, we've used some hits, we've used... Oh, we've got another downer here. Let's listen to that one. Oh, that's, that's like a much more obvious downer. Let's put that at the end of Act 3. Wait a minute for... Yeah, that's it. I'll chuck it there. Oh no. Okay, let's keep going. Um, again, this is all. These are all the free kits and hits. Uh, oh, indeed. So let's have a listen to this breath. Perfect Act One material that is. It's the kind of subtle atmosphere. Atmospheric breath. Cool. Attempt to put that in again. And then again here. I quite like it with the boom. I must say. And then we come back into Act 2. So this is sort of shaping up to become quite a nice little sound design track. Cool, I like that. And then I'm gonna chuck it at the end here as well. It's gonna become like a almost signature breath. Let's keep going. I think there might be some more interesting sounds going on here. Got, got that, that breath was me, by the way. <sighs> nice. <laughs> uh, pings, Thor's tiny hammer. Ah, okay, so that was the sound that I reversed to create the ringing in my ears transition. Now that Thor's tiny hammer, <laughs> this is me and my daughter recording this, is on our windows. When you close the window, the spring clicks into place and loosens, and it does this great ping, like great ping. And that's the, that's the sound of it being... 
messed up. So what have we got? Uh, okay, so we've got some plucks and we've got some Brahms. Classic. Okay, I'm going to use these Brahms and I'm going to also change this violin E to a D just to kind of keep it in place. Let's start with the let's start with Act One. Oh, right, I'm not going to chuck that in straight away because I don't want to give away all of the goods. There we go. And then I think I might use that every four. Is it every four? It's every three, isn't it? So you can tell Act Two at this stage is quite spacious. <laughs> it's like it's missing a bit of business. Uh, which is fine at this stage. Um, what it does tell me is that maybe I'm going to be doubling up those hits in the three. Okay, I might keep these every other one like that, just to kind of keep it a little bit more of an interesting sound. There we go. I love that. That, I mean, that sounds like a brilliant... Brilliant stop down now. I've just noticed this pluck is a little bit late. So let's just move it here and move all of them there. Which we might be able to hear better now. Oh, or maybe my hit is a bit. Ah, my hit is late, isn't it? Doy. That's better. Pluck. <coughs> now, if you remember, I was going to pitch shift that down. So again, nothing kind of crazy here. Now, the reason I wanted to use include is just pitch, pitching down two semitones. So we've got this. So it's in D. So the reason why is to include things like plucks and pings and brahms, brahms, is because they often offer you a lot of the kind of foundations for everything else you do. I'll show you that. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Uh, but I think you, you should be starting to kind of hear what I'm essentially trying to do with all of this stuff is create, sketch out all the major kind of cut points and the major elements in the structure, Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, the stop downs. But also... giving it some kind of life and some kind of atmosphere. So if any, if you, any of you ever watched Bob Ross painting, it's like when he start doing the washes at the back, you know, and kind of start hinting at shapes, but not really doing anything else other than that. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And I don't know how long we've been doing this for. What, 20 minutes? The, the track is shaping up to the point where I go, oh, okay, I think I can fill everything else in quite easily. Uh, Bram, it's going to be a classic. Brassy Brahm, isn't it? We're going to use this in Act 3. Nice. Like that. And I also like hearing this transition. <laughs> this is sounding so meaty. I like it a lot. I can check that in, the, in between Act 3 and 4. Oh, that's sounding rather aggressive. I do like it, though. So I might... You could chop this up as well. Oh. Let's have a look. Let's just move this here and cut it at playhead. What I mean by that is just, you're just sort of snipping these so that they're kind of like really obvious samples. And you kind of start to get the idea of what is happening to this track and how it's kind of essentially being 
brutalized, as it were. Uh, there we go. Let's put these transitions in there. I feel like I'm missing something. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's a fifth one. That's why. Take those out. And then we're going to go. And then it's the ending. So all of this is shaping up really, really nicely. And I hope you can start to th hear how this creates the world that you're going to write your track in. So just an example, I'm going to show you how you could take this. So we could go down the action sound design route a bit more, and we could load up some bass samples. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my sample libraries folder and open up some Keep Forest. Ooh, Keep Forest, there we go. Uh, this one, Warzone. I think this is the one I like, yeah. Uh, we're going to load up some bass and we're going to just think about how we can use this bass now as a way to kind of fatten this out and give it some new sounds. Uh, let's just have a listen to this. <laughs> Nice. Okay. We're in D. I wonder if there's any bass samples in D. I know I can shift it, but. So they've already got the hits baked in. Don't want that. Uh, ooh, brass and stabs. D sharp. Mm, orchestral. Let's go distortion bass in D. Boom. So I'm going to open this up now. So this is going to kind of fan out our track a bit more. And what we can do is we can go, okay, so if this is going to be a sound design cue, this is going to be the kind of the basis for it. And we're going to go, okay, let's take this every four for now, just so it's not too often, because otherwise I will get tired of hearing it. And I'm just going to add a little fade out on the end of those. Bass. Okay. So we're getting the picture of it here. And now you could take that one step further and go into, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to ca carry this on into act three. And then what we're going to do is we're going to load up a contact instrument and it's going to be a freebie. So let's see if we can load up Ferrum, the free one, which is, in my opinion, superb. Just going to beef it up with a couple of little hits, really. <laughs> I can't even hear the click. Damn it. There we go. Nice. And then we'll do the same again. I'll do it every other one like that. And then we start and then we can start to bring in some rises if we want, you know. Like that, dun, 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 dun. It's cool. Um, so I hope you can start to see that by sketching the track using the one shots, it's all this other stuff is just falling into place, and I don't really have to worry about it too much. I don't have to think too much. Um, I will put the a caveat: don't rely on one shots being your signature sounds and kind of forming the majority of your track because then everyone's going to be, have the same sounding tracks. And yes, we also have the sound, same sounding hits, but, you know, to be honest, the hits don't maketh the track, really. So let's take, for example, let's say we're going to go, well, I want to make this like an orchestral thing. So we're going to go load up Jaeger and... Ew, French horns. Uh, let's load up some strings. Uh, we're going to load up uh, full strings doing spiccato. Uh, and we're going to put them on tight. Okay, right, so...
Oh, we're in D, aren't we? I'm not going to think too much about this. Something like that. Although I don't like that C at the end of it. No. Eighth notes, please. There we go. Although, to be honest, I think this would probably go into here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump that up an octave and I'm going to just create a little rhythm down here. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, something like that. I don't often use all string sample patches, but in this instance, it kind of helps. All I'm thinking is just like, what can I do to kind of give this drive and... Nice. Can we go knocked? And then just giving this a little bit of a welly. Not sure I like that kind of... Uh, the uh, E flat on that little riff. I might just move that. Holding down shift. There we go. So which means I can then double these because they won't be that weird clash. I mean... It's not complete by any stretch of the imagination, but you can start to hear how me sketching this track has kind of meant that I can then take it and run with it. So I can either go full orchestral, you know, or I can go sound design, or I can go sort of organic thrillery sound design, get my cello out and start recording. The options are many. But what I've done is I've spent 15, in fact, if I wasn't talking about it, whilst doing the tutorial, it would have been 10 to 15 minutes to sketch out a whole queue and get the big bulk of the work done. Then you can just spend your time writing and enjoying that process rather than kind of battling the structure, battling the changes, battling the scale that you need to achieve in Act 3, because you've already done it. You've done the trailerization work at the front of it. You've started with the one-shots. So I hope this helps you and I hope you enjoyed it. This is a really, really useful technique across the board with Trello music. Like I said, in almost all the genres, doing this first, sketching the track first, really, really makes a huge difference. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.